Welcome back trainees, this is another ranking video looking at every yoga fit skill in Ring Fit Adventure with a critical eye and seeing which one is best for you. Ring Fit is of course the exceptional fitness sensation that deserved at least a Me Fighter costume in Smash Bros Ultimate and has 43 main fit skills to use in battle, each being a different exercise. There are four types of skill and yoga is the most peaceful of them, and each move has a real focus on breathing and flexibility. It's a great addition to the more traditional exercises and there are 10 in the game with very varied movements. So which of them is best for you? Before we start, I'm trying to be as objective as possible, not taking into account my own likes and dislikes. What I'm using to judge the moves is how it works your body, what muscles they work, what function the move holds for your workout, the amount of prior skill or conditioning needed to perform them, and how the form is implemented in the game through instruction. I'd also like to point out that none of these moves are actively bad for you when performed correctly, and if you want to use them, that is awesome, they're just maybe ones that work those muscles in a more effective way, or have better cueing and implementation in-game. So this is, in my opinion, as a fitness professional, a ranking of all of the yoga skills in Ring Fit, so let's get stuck in. Remember, this listing saves the best for last. Starting with the worst of the yoga skills, I've opted for Fan Pose. This move is built around a side bend with the ring overhead while seated with one leg outstretched and the other bent so that the foot is close to the groin. It gives an effective stretch on the outer hip of the close leg and the hamstring of the outstretched one with some mild oblique training. This is all well and good, but the leg position is rather difficult to get into for a lot of people with the in-game instruction not giving a lot of help for those who struggle with the image presented by Tip. Fan pose gives minor core benefits that can be obtained elsewhere and the stretching is also done more effectively with other moves and in the in-game cooldown. It's not one to actively avoid, but this move doesn't do so much that can't be done better elsewhere. At number 9 is the infamous boat pose. Infamous because, well, in a previous video, I ranked it in the worst 5 moves in the game, so why has it gone up a place? Well. Boat Pose is a complicated, higher level core move that is really effective for not only the Rectus Abdominus at the front, but the Erectus Spinae at the back, really helping with keeping people stable whilst moving in a smooth fashion. It has some great benefits for the core, but it is the most difficult move in the game as far as body mechanics go, and the fairly poor instruction in game makes me hesitate to recommend it for a lot of players. It has a high skill floor to perform properly, where a few players would not be able to complete it safely, and therefore it does have a higher injury risk than many of the other moves in the game, which is why it's so low on this list. If you've trained your core well with moves like leg raise, overhead bend, and other core moves, and you're confident, then boat pose is a great progression that will help give you some really good results. But otherwise, just be careful, okay? Next is standing forward fold, and honestly, this is a personal favorite of mine. Placing the ring behind your head and bending forward whilst keeping your back straight, it stretches the hamstrings well at the apex of the hip flex, whilst giving some work for the erectus spinae when returning to standing, making it effective on both the concentric and eccentric phases. This is a fine move, but again, a case of what it provides being provided better elsewhere. It's definitely fine to put into your routine, and in the case of the erectus spinae, actually does have a better range of movement than most other examples in the game, but overall, if you're looking to train as effectively as possible, you'll want to go with other moves first. Warrior One Pose comes in at number 7 and is another great example of it's just fine. The side bend is decent as is the split leg position, it's one of the first yoga moves you get access to in adventure mode and so it's a great beginner move. But the lunge twists and poses do the split leg position better, the overhead hold is pretty much the same as other moves like tree pose and overhead bend, and the side bend is done more effectively elsewhere too. It's a fun move for sure with a low skill floor and postural benefits for the shoulders, it's just another case of done better somewhere else. Coming in hot and static at number 6 is Chair Pose. This is often confused for Warrior 1 Pose and they were fairly close for me as far as what to put where in the list. Chair Pose uses an isometric half squat, creating metabolic stress on the legs to train them and work your endurance, whilst also having you maintain steady breathing and perform constant shoulder flexion and extension. It's good for shoulder mobility and can be tough on the legs, but the lactic buildup can help with longer sets of squats as you can handle the load more effectively. Pretty simple to do and has good in-game implementation. There are better moves to train the legs more traditionally and to train the shoulders and core to boot, so it has its place in the program but typically would not be a key move for a workout. It does make a great accessory move though. 
At number 5, the Warrior 2 pose. This is a fantastic move that opens up their hips and stretches out the pectorals very effectively. It's a mostly simple move to perform that makes it quite accessible as it uses small amounts of internal and external rotation at the shoulder joint which isn't trained too effectively elsewhere. It can be slightly difficult to set up at first though with the in-game instructions being less than perfect and not quite explaining that the feet need to be pointing out in different directions to get the most from the hip stretch, which knocks it down a peg for me. The pec stretch is great as is the hip stretch, but the rest of the benefits are fairly niche. It's absolutely one you want to use in your sessions, especially as a cool down for an arm or shoulder workout, which is awesome. I do wish I could score it higher, but the next few are really, really good moves. Hinge Pose comes in at number 4 and it's a really effective move for a lot of people, hence it's high placement. It's got a low skill floor, requiring you to bend over with back parallel to the ground and have your arm go up directly above you from the side and back. It allows for a decent stretch for the pectorals whilst also activating the latissimus dorsi when you twist, which makes it one of the few moves to effectively get them working in ring fit. The static stretch also gives a great longer stretch to the hamstrings, which are often tight. It's an attacking move in adventure mode that also has a lot of good queuing in game, which makes it an attractive prospect as far as the move goes. There are some more important muscles that can be trained with yoga moves though and the downwards reach can be difficult for some people to do. A yoga block or book can assist with this though. With the most complicated name to say, Revolved Crescent Lunge Pose comes in at number 3. Revolved Crescent Lunge Pose shares a lot of benefits with the overhead lunge twist from the ab moves. It trains the core, gives effective hip and knee flexion and extension on opposing legs, creating a good hip stretch and it trains stability too. These benefits are great and the transverse curve motion that you go through, the revolving crescent movement as such, is really decent for the obliques. It has a lot of benefits and it's also a single attacking move in adventure with a pretty high power. Its implementation is generally quite good but it can be tough to get right at first and the queuing doesn't do an amazing job at helping you. There's very little injury risk here which is awesome. Once you have the motion down though, it's really good for most programs and a worthy holder of the number 3 spot. The number 2 placement goes to the excellent but tough Warrior 3 pose. This move involves standing on one leg, hinging forward, making the upper body and other leg parallel to the ground with arms outstretched, making a T shape essentially. Then you reverse the motion smoothly. It trains a lot of muscles well, the core and the hip flexors, the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings all get a go in here and I rate this one so highly for being the closest move in game to a deadlift. The deadlift of course being the optimal way in weightlifting to train the hinge movement. Warrior 3 pose features similar muscle recruitment to the single leg deadlift, making it a very effective move to bring into your workouts. It is a technically difficult move though. The queuing and implementation is really good in the game which helps, but it can be difficult for beginners to pull off repeatedly and effectively and properly. Despite this, it gets a really high rating from me for the function it holds in a workout and how well it is put into the game, although I do personally recommend building up to it using other moves like overhead bend and the final yoga move on this list, which we'll talk about right now. So the number one yoga move in Ring Fit Adventure if you haven't worked it out yet is Tree Pose. That's right, this move has a large amount of benefits for almost all routines, it has excellent implementation in game, and has a fairly low skill floor with plenty of manual ways to regress and progress the move. This means you can find a way of doing it no matter what your skill level is. It involves standing on one leg, bringing the opposite foot up to your thigh, and then performing a side bend with the ring overhead. There are lots of things going on here, working through hip and general leg flexibility, some oblique work too. The thing is, the move is arguably the best way in game to train stability through the whole body as you want your entire body in a straight line for the initial setup and it is the best way to train ankle stability here. Ankle stability helps with the aforementioned Warrior 3 pose most obviously, but also helps with running in game, dynamic moves like knee lift combo and sidestep, and more. The core and postural benefits are great too, these can be matched elsewhere but combined with the ankle stability makes for an incredible combo move. It's also extremely simple to start with. If you can't get your foot into position on your thigh properly, you can just keep your leg lifted off the floor in a flamingo position or resting at the lower leg to build up flexibility and stability. There are some minor risks here of course, pressing the foot into the side of the knee can be a real recipe for injury, but only if you place lots of pressure from the heel are you really risking it. The fact that it's an attacking move in adventure mode makes for great utility too. These factors in game combining with its usefulness for the most training regimes makes this the best yoga skill in the game. So there we have a ranking of all of the yoga skills. It was a really interesting one as I had tree pose and warrior three in stone, but then everything else was really tough to figure out, especially boat pose. I found that really hard to place. I hope you thought all the points were worth a listen and that they make sense. Let me know in the comments if you think differently or if you agree, if you don't, whatever. As always, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'm starting to prepare the ab skill one now. And if you haven't checked out the arm and leg ones, 
please do. Thank you so much to my patrons like Rain, I Love Waffles, 1311 and Sick Hippie for the fantastic support through Patreon. Thank you again, I've been Master Trainer Peter, and I'll see you real soon.